Hey guys, Mr. Kennedy back with the second part of the central dogma, which is translation. Alright, now just a refresher what the central dogma is. The central dogma is how in the world we take DNA, which is found inside the cell in the nucleus, we turn it into RNA, and then we translate that message into a protein, which ultimately becomes a trait. Now, translation, if you look, is right here. Translation is taking RNA to protein. This is translation. So how does mRNA code for a protein? Well, mRNA has all these letters in it, A, U, G, C, G, U, U, A, C, C, whatever. And it got that information from the DNA. So up here we have a DNA molecule right here, or a seg uh, uh, one side of a DNA molecule. And this T went with this A, this A, U, G, C, etc., all the way down the line, right? And that created mRNA. This mRNA then left the nucleus, and it went to the ribosome where it was coded. And what we will do is we'll look, AUG will turn into methanine, CGU will turn into arginine, GUA will turn into valine, etc., now, there are 20 different amino acids and only four nucleotide bases that code for it. Now, I know this, this sounds crazy, but if one nucleotide or nitrogen base counted for one amino acid, there would only be four possibilities, one for A, one for U, one for C, and one for G. We know there's 20 amino acids. So, if two nitrogen bases or nucleotides coded for amino acid, you would have a possibility of 16 different amino acids. But we know there are 20 amino acids, so they do what's called triplet codes. There's three of them in a row that code for it. And even though there are 20 amino acids, there are 64 possibilities. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, as I just mentioned, it, it, it breaks it down in triplet codes. Uh, AUG is a code. G CGU is a code. Example. That is called a codon, okay, so remember that. And a codon was first discovered by Crick from Watson and Crick's fame, and he determined that it was a codon system that is what is breaking it down. And it was later proven by Nuremberg and Corana that mRNA actually can be changed to an amino acid. There's amino acids attached to it. And what they did was they created an artificial segment of mRNA that had U, 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 and they got it translated into phenylalanine. So that's where they first figured out that this mRNA is turning into a protein. And here's the actual genetic code that we have today. And as you can see over here, there are 64 different triplet codes. All right, there's 64 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You get the idea. 64 different possibilities. There are 20 amino acids. That would be the same one. So if you went over there and counted, there were 20 amino acids. And all life has the exact same code. No matter if you're a tree, a dog, a cat, a human, you have the exact same code. So this is the first evidence that all life has a single lineage of some sort, have evolutionary base because we have the same genetic code no matter what we are. Now, within every triplet code, there is a third base, which is called the wobble base, and this is the one that changes the amino acid most often times. Now, there are two specific codons I want you to make sure you know. You need to know what a start codon is. It will always be AUG, which stands for methanine. That's very important to remember. And then there are three stop codons. So out of those 64 codons, four of them actually do not code for amino acids. All right? They actually do not code for amino acids. There's four that do not code for an amino acid. All right. Now... If you look at it, how do these codons get matched up with the right amino acid? Well, there is a amino, I mean, a RNA called tRNA, which actually brings the amino acid to the mRNA, and it has what we call anti-codon on it. So let me explain. If AUG is the codon, right, that's the codon, then the what would go with A would be a U, U would be an A, a G would be a C, and UAC is what we call the anti-codon codon. 
TRNA has the anticodon on it, and it also carries the amino acid. And when it brings this amino acid to the right, to the mRNA, where the ribosome is the one doing the reading, it will leave the amino acid behind. And that gives us the structure of a tRNA. The structure of a tRNA, it has, you know, a three primed end and a five primed end, just like other genetic material we know of. And the amino acid is actually attached to the three primed end, which makes sense. Where does where does those nucleotides attach to three prime end whenever we're doing DNA replication, etc. And you know, make sure you look at the structure. You'll see this in a lot of different ways. Sometimes it's that clover leaf, which is down here in the bottom left or it'd be shaped like this upper right-hand side, but it has an anticodon on the bottom of it. And what happens is that this uh, tRNA is loaded, or the, the amino acid is put on the tRNA by the use of energy and an enzyme called amino acetyl tRNA synthase, uh, you don't have to memorize you don't have to memorize that, but just realize there's an enzyme and energy put this amino acid to this tRNA. The tRNA is actually going to bring the amino acid to the ribosome, leave it, and go pick up another one. So it's it's recycled over and over and over again. That leads us to the ribosome. The ribosome is the structure that actually reads the mRNA, and it's made up of two subunits. It's made up of a large subunit and a small subunit, very high-tech information. And within every ribosome, there are three sites, the EPA sites, and actually they go in this direction, so you can think of them as the APE sites if you want to. Um, and the, the APE sites, or the EPA sites, whichever you want to say, are where different things happen to the tRNA, which would be on this set page here. So if you look, the A site is the amino acetyl tRNA site, and it's where it actually the tRNA will come and then set and wait for its turn to be read by the ribosome. The P side is the peptide side is when, where the amino acid is actually being put together. All right, and what you often have in here, you have them being put together in this polypeptide chain in the P. And then the E side is the exit side or the empty tRNA. So real, think about it this way. There would be a tRNA here, right, that may have um, alanine on it, okay. And this one is here, and when it goes off, this one will come down to this way, and it won't have anything up here, and it'll fall off. That's on the empty side. This one will eventually move to this place, this one this place, on down the line, so it shifts from place to place. Okay. Now, the last thing is, when we think about building a polypeptide, a big molecule, it has th three parts. Initiation is whenever you bring the mRNA, the ribosome subunits, and the tRNA all together. You get it started. Elongation is the actual making of the polypeptide. And then termination is whenever you stop the code. So here we have over here, we have the initiation, right? You have the elongation, which is number two. And then you have the termination over here. All right. So I hope that helps you understand translation. And I will talk to you soon.